From hot spots to hidden gems, this is your guide to all things local the LA unscripted way from our Sunset Gower studio offices. <laughs> It's the place where dreams come true, right in our own backyard. Now, we want to inspire you to get lost in your own neighborhood, discover a new one, and fall in love with SoCal all over again. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and let's get right to our first LA Unscripted approved local fave. If you watch our show, you know we love viewer suggestions. And today we're in Baldwin Park because of Annie B's suggestion she sent to us on Instagram. It says, hello, LA Unscripted. Your show is our favorite. We live in Baldwin Park, very little town. One of our favorite spots is La Cosecha, which is a very good spot for happy hour and just getting together with friends and family. I want people to know our little city. <laughs> La cosecha means the harvest. It's the farm workers, it's the people that bring the food, that grow the food, and therefore we're able to eat that food, right? Because now it's been harvested. So for us, La Cosecha is giving homage back to those who helped us eat what's in front of us. Look at this spread right here. This covers breakfast, brunch, lunch, and dinner. It melts in your mouth, it is so good. How can every dish be as good as a next? La Cosecha is a Mexican bistro in Baldwin Park, California. So our original idea was we want to make the best breakfast in town. Talking it over with our chef and going over our recipes, we decided to say, hey man, let's just let's do dinner. Okay, I'm sitting in their main booth and it says La Cosecha de Mujeres Nunca Se Acaba which loosely translates to a woman's work is never done. And my work is eating. So these are called chilaquiles divorciados, divorced. So you have green and you have red. And in the middle you have a piece of steak and it comes with potatoes, beans, and egg. I know I say this stuff like this all the time, but without a doubt, 100%, if I had an award to give I would give it to you right now for the best chilaquiles ever in the history of the world. Some of these recipes are from a very known chef, well chef. Some of them are our own. Some of them are my mom's. These are biquesabirias. This is your mother's recipe. Yes. Her dream was always to own a restaurant. Okay. So, so growing up, she loves to cook. Before she left to work, she would get up hours before, leave food ready for us for breakfast and lunch. Oh. She would even um, cook for her coworkers. She actually would sell burritos and gorditas. That was her trying to achieve her dream as being a, a restaurateur, you could say. So is it kind of symbolic that you guys wanted to open a restaurant here in this area? Most definitely. When we picked the, this restaurant, growing up in the San Gabriel Valley in La Puente, we definitely wanted to bring something back to home because it's still home. Just even look at the outside of this. Like, oh my God, that looks delicious. Okay, dip it in this. I want to like make a home inside this taco and eat my way out. I mean, that's out of this world. We're really passionate about what we do and I feel like our customers are now really understanding that they're seeing uh, what we've brought to the city, something that is unheard of in this area. I'm dead, I'm dead. This is, what is this? So this is our mimosa tower. I have never seen a French toast like this. As I dig into this, I have to say, thank you so much to our viewer, Annie B, who sent us here, because I have to say, it has been worth every calorie, every bite. Oh, we are so grateful. Cheers, thank you, love you, Annie B. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming out. Oh. Thank you, Annie. Did you know Los Angeles has more cars than people? That's why we give you all these tips to make sure that the traffic is worth it before you head out. Remember, honk if you see me or our Olivia De Bertoli. She is always out and about in LA. 
At Sophia University, you get more than an education. You get the chance to make a difference in your life and that of your community. Sophia University is many things to many people, and I think that's what I like most about it is it certainly has its history rooted in psychology. It, we started in 1975. We've been around for almost 50 years, so we're coming up on our 50th anniversary. It's a small university that started off with lots of distance education, scholars, thinkers, practitioners from all over the world. Uh, we actually started as a psychology school, um, but since we have branched out to offer business, computer science, and even AI certificates and cybersecurity, um, really embracing emerging trends and fields that people are really interested in. I would say affordability, um, the smaller class sizes, and the personalized attention that you get. With Sophia University, a lot of universities, they just focus on the subject itself, but we actually focus on the whole person. If there was a student watching who was maybe nervous to kind of start going to school or, or switch schools, what would you tell them? Here, your success is our success. We understand that everyone is a human with a unique life and everything happening in the background. We're here for the working professional. We understand that you have other things on your plate and we want to support you in all facets of your life, including that lifelong learning component and for those professionals that want to get back to school and just learn a little bit more. When you're here, you're allowed to show up um, as you are who you are. We see that individual and we like to foster that individual in their own personal journey. It's sort of silly, but our parking is fantastic. <laughs> As a former student, it's a big deal. Um, and I think because our faculty are so invested and they have that experience in the business world, in computer science, and you're really learning from unique professionals that can bring their expertise and are so invested in our student success. And it's very um, personalized. It's um, the 2024 Sophia University Global Mental Health Conference. It's, we're in our second year, and it's due to be on August 16th through the 18th, and it's both in-person and virtual. And we anticipate having uh, attendees from all over the world, and the focus is really on this issue of mental health, which is so important to not only folks in psychology, but people who run businesses and people who are employed at businesses. Mental health is something that we found in our travels that in many countries, it's a high priority. I hope that they take a real commitment to knowing self and to listening and coming to know the other, building positive relationships in whatever field they choose to work in. Another local tidbit, did you know most of our palm trees are transplants? There are a variety of species, but the most prominent are Mexican fan palms that were imported here back in the 1930s. That's cool. And you know, we are here to keep you in the know, so don't go anywhere. More local facts, finds, and fun when LA Unscripted is back in an LA Minute. Welcome back to LA Unscripted, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and we are coming in hot with the latest hotspot you don't want to miss. You got a little balsamic, little tomato. We're going to put the strawberry in the bite. Okay, ready? I'm swooning. Lingua Franca is... For us, it means the common language of good food. Did you always want to be a chef? Since I was, you know, five years old, I think I was just always fascinated by it. I think it coincided with the rise of the Food Network and not really living in the middle of the desert, not having a lot to do. Salt those tomatoes. Okay. Lauren and I met working in a restaurant downtown. We met in uh, 2012. I was working in the back. She was working in the front. One of those things that you just, you know, you meet somebody and you're just like, you just know like from this point on my life is going to be different. We opened Wax Paper in 2015 and now it's 2023 and there's two Wax Papers and now we have Lingua Frank at the restaurant where I try to lean towards like, is it delicious? Great. And that's what we're going to do. I think this 
location here along the LA River, I think it comes back to when we opened Wax Paper. There was this creative energy here. It just makes sense here. You open, you know, the gate onto the bike path and there's a beautiful part of the river. There's always water here. There's tons of wildlife, very unique. And, you know, we love coming here every day. And I think it was important to us to keep some of the original mm -hmm. things, such as the beams. And right. actually we found out too that you can't cover these plaques, these, this brass metal. They found some old bottles from post-prohibition underneath the oh, ground, really? which was pretty cool. So we were able to save some of those. On so many of their chairs here, there's a plaque. This one says Marjorie and Brendan. What, yeah. are, are these regulars? Yeah, well, they're friends of ours. Marjorie did all the painting on the building. So she hand painted the sign on the front and Brendan did all of our lighting. Oh, Yeah. So you know what you need now, right? What? Oh, I need a Dana. I, well, I need a KTLA. I'll take a Dana, but it's yeah. LA Unscripted. You need yes, LA, LA Unscripted We chair. can do that, we can do that. Actually, the plaques were made locally too, just down the street. So I really wanted this to be a place that really spoke to where we are in, you know, in LA, in California. I mean, there's really best climate in the world, the best farmer's markets in the world, the best, you know, dairy, the best ranches, having a really great product on the menu, making just honestly delicious food. So you're going to teach us how to make these? Yeah. Crispy potatoes, basically. Crispy yeah. potatoes. Do you just grab a big old handful? Oh. Literally, yes. Into the fryer here. Now it's going to splatter. Okay, so I'm going to get back. Let's be careful here okay. with this water. I've yeah. heard so much about these. It's kind of like hash browns. Oh, these are so good. Oh my God. And you eat with your hands? Yeah, exactly. And you just shove it in your mouth like that. Oh, you are. Some of the desserts definitely have just been inspired by the restaurant and the amazing space that Peter and Lauren have yeah. created here. So we're gonna do a choco flan and we're also going to do a cherry misu, which is a cherry tiramisu. Although I'm pretty intrigued by the party fun mix. <laughs> I think I wanna live in the jar of party fun mix. Is this the prettiest thing? Oh my God, it's so good. Thank you. So this is our choco flan. I'm gonna put some whiskey caramel on top. Whiskey caramel, did you hear that? I'm melting. Oh my God! We're open seven days a week. Uh, dinner, five to 10 every day. Recently opened brunch a month and a half ago on Saturday and Sunday, 11 to two uh, on, on the weekends. I couldn't work without Lauren. You know, I think like the two of us have such a unique partnership. We're not gonna give up. We're not gonna fail. We're gonna be successful. I feel so lucky. We couldn't do this, I think, like without each other, really. We love to hear from you, so make sure to follow us at, at KTLA Unscripted and let us know where to go and what to try next. Coming up, more locally approved destinations when LA Unscripted returns. <laughs> The city where anything happens and with over 105 exhibition halls and 225 theaters, it's a good thing we're here to keep you in the know. My dad was a pilot and had a special appreciation for Air Force One, so shooting here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Museum and Library means so much to me. Let's go. I do believe in a fate that will fall on us if we do nothing. The Ronald Reagan Presidential Library Museum opened in 1991, but it was actually renovated back in 2011. And it tells the life and times and story of Ronald Reagan from his boyhood all the way through post-presidency. But it includes some really great, engaging and interactive things like the Air Force One behind me, gaming tables. You can actually act in a movie with Ronald Reagan using green screen. Every president of the United States, when they leave office, um, um, is allowed to have a presidential library and museum. It's called the library because all of those president's um, archives are here on site. So we have all of his papers, all of his photographs, all the gifts people gave him. Um, anything that was his work product during the presidency is here on our site. He also donated everything from when he was governor of California. Probably our most 
famous attraction is here over my left shoulder, which is Air Force One. This is the actual aircraft that flew seven U.S. presidents around the world. It flew a million miles serving presidents. President Reagan was responsible for about 660,000 of those miles. It was in, serv in service from Nixon all the way through the first President Bush. You get to walk into the plane, you walk through the plane, and then when you come out, you go down, you get to walk under the plane. So it really is a full 360 degree view of this historic flying White House. All right, Melissa, this is where the media would sit, right? This is for us. Yeah, so we're in the back, back, back of the plane. <laughs> I believe there's 10 seats, and media back then, as well as today, have to pay the price of a first class airline ticket, I think plus a penny, just so that it's not the American people and taxpayers buying them their flight on Air Force One, they themselves are buying the ticket. Wow, so we would have to pay first class. I can't afford that, but <laughs> we will try. <laughs> Every six months or so, we change out our special exhibition. We bring in a Christmas exhibition every year. We've done exhibitions on the Titanic, on Da Vinci, um, on Egypt, on the Vatican. And Melissa, this is a very cool room. You don't get this anywhere else. No, so this is a full-scale replica of the White House Oval Office, decorated as it was during Ronald Reagan's presidency. And it really is the full scale, from the ceiling to the floor, um, to the replica um, Resolute Desk. In fact, if you look at the Resolute Desk and you see at the bottom the wood doesn't match, that's because President President Reagan was so tall, his knees always bumped up against the drawer when he opened it, so he asked the carpenters to lift it up, and so that's why you see that. So it doesn't matter if you're six years old or 96 years old, you're gonna learn something while you're here, and I hopefully have a really fun time while doing it, and so we really encourage anyone to just to come on up and enjoy the day. LA's diverse culture and people make our city so interesting. It's incredible to think that Angelinos represent more than 140 countries and speak at least 224 different languages. I didn't even know there were that many languages. Wow, now immerse yourself into a new experience. So everybody sits around. Nobody f puts food in their mouth. You feed me, I feed you. I've never been formally trained for anything. And I raised my son being a waitress. My son was my guinea pig. I didn't have anything for my son, but I had love and food. <laughs> well, the Ethiopian salad is the most popular. It goes with any Ethiopian dish you make, period. And we have collard greens, cabbage and carrots, potatoes, carrot, green beans, yellow split peas. So it's, it's endless. In Ethiopia, we have more. Here you concentrate it. Up. So this is injera? This is injera. That's okay. our Ethiopian bread. We put it, as you can see, on the base. to plate it on. Okay. And then you break the chicken if you eat that and the tofu. Okay. Just to start with the tofu. Kind of like this? Yes. And okay. you can mix it with the salad. I hope it's not spicy. I'm not afraid of spice. Okay, good girl. The late Jonathan Gold spoke so highly of you and, and wrote about you. And what does that mean to you? Just it means everything. You are here. And so everyone's ordering the door wash. Pretty much. Oh my gosh. Well, then, and you know the what that tofu. means? You know what that means? That means I gotta taste a little. Okay. Yeah. That is delicious. And yeah. you said this takes days. It takes days. days with that, yeah. I see why. He wrote the best dishes of 2004. He put my door on. So now takeout hours are Thursday through Sunday, five to eight. Yes. So they can get catered and private events are available. Like the whole week, seven days a week, they can book a private party. LA has fantastic food. So many places give you incredible dishes, incredible food. I think we're the star. La La Land, the city of angels, Tinseltown. SoCal's ever-changing, yet somehow stays the same. But now, what's old is new again. We've won numerous awards being the favorite deli or best deli in LA. Wow. The sandwiches were a hit from the beginning. It just went that way, sandwiches, sandwiches, sandwiches. It just didn't stop. This is probably the best sandwich I've ever had. I'm not even kidding. 
Mario's Deli is a deli market. We do catering. We have pastas, coffees, tomatoes. We've got uh, olive oils. A lot of imported goodies and groceries, domestic and imported. Gelato, we make our own tiramisu. It's on display. It's like a little corner here of Italy. My name is Mario and I've been here forever and still here. This is my lovely wife, Albina. My mom and dad immigrated here from Italy. They found a market, they opened it up. I grew up here in a deli as a young kid. And in the morning, I'd go with my mom and pick up the bread, come in, she'd do her thing. So it's been 60 years and um, I'm still with my parents and it's just uh, it's a blessing to be able to, to be together still. Okay, I've got my hat on. I'm about to go see where the sandwich magic happens. The bad boy is a hot sandwich. You have a choice of pastrami or our turkey chicken. The SOB was my doing. Spicy sofrasata, the oven roasted chicken, and the balsamic vinegar. We cut the bread once. Cut the bread. Oh, twice, twice. you cut the bread. So should we do the Italian combo? Yeah. Salami, the mortadella, the capicola. You guys do not skimp on the meat. Okay, so we're gonna put a little Ellie scripted twist on this. Is yes, that okay? I love it. Can we put a little vinegar on this? Oh, these peppers are so good, you guys. We're gonna put lots of peppers. I'm from Texas. We like peppers. This is the Mario's combo Ellie scripted style, and thank you. Jim just said he's gonna put it on the menu, didn't you? Right away. We have a space <laughs> up there. See right below the veggie. My baby. Los Angeles was founded in 1781. I wonder what the next 241 years will hold. Well, go out and enjoy it now and let us know what you love about living here because you never know where we'll end up next. Good night, everyone. Mwah.